Hey everyone, welcome to Film Trooper Presents Film Marketing Fridays. And today's topic is described as Facebook marketing for filmmakers. Well, we don't quite get into the details of Facebook marketing until hour number two, meaning that the discussion in the Q&A that I had with guest filmmaker Philip Abraham of philopickens.com uh, kind of took a life of its own, but it's a lot of good information, a lot of you know good back and forth questions that need to be answered. Um, so what you'll see is this is part one, and then you can catch up with part two later at your own leisure because two-hour podcast is just way too long, and as well as two-hour hangout session is just way too long to watch on YouTube. So without further ado, this is part one, and then check back for part two. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Film Trooper Presents Film Marketing Fridays. And today's episode is sponsored by Brian Grazer. No. <laughs> Actually, uh, when he just wrote a book recently, and in one of his interviews, uh, he uh, basically claimed that the film business has changed dramatically for someone who makes movies like himself. Um, it's not set for anybody. International and marketing have a very big votes if a movie gets made or not. And that's Brian Grazier. And if you don't know who Brian Grazier is, he's basically Ron Howard's partner and has made a lot of big blo blockbusters. It's just a very prominent movie producer uh, for many, many years. And he is having trouble. And things are completely changing for someone of his status. So with that said, well, how do you make and sell your film online? and survive the Hollywood implosion while doing it? Well, you can go check out the new book over at Amazon. Um, and the quick, easy URL link to find that book is survivetheimplosion.com. All right. Um, with that said, let me stop the slides and show you my big fat head. My name is Scott McMahon, my fellow film trooper. And today I'm joined by uh, my guest uh, filmmaker all, of, all the way over in Austin, Texas, uh, Philip Abraham over at uh, Philo Pickens. Uh, is it Philo uh, Pickens uh, Productions, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Cool, so so you can say hello to everybody. Hey guys, <laughs> happy to be with y'all. Great to actually, you know, finally get to meet you, Scott, and uh, <laughs> talk to you about all these things. I've been listening for quite a while now. Awesome, well, it's, I'm, it's a pleasure to have you on, and uh, I'm excited to show some everybody what you're working on. We can dig, dig deeper about marketing and business questions. Um, uh, real quick, I, I, you can kind of talk us through here. I'm going to show a little bit of your page so um, we can present that to people here. So this is uh, uh, Philo Pickens Productions, and you have this short film that is in over 30 festivals, I believe. Uh, and sure. it's, uh, it's Buzzed. The name of the film is Buzzed. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Buzzed real quick? Uh, Buzzed is um, a erotic thriller, and mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's got a nice twist to the end of the film. It's a short film, about eight minutes long, and uh, that's a good length. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, nice little compact uh, film, and there's a lot packed in in that eight minutes, and really gets you going. And uh, it's the the twist is a real payoff to it, and uh, the twist is also a metaphor for the theme of the the film itself. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, and there's two main characters, and really, that's it. There's only two characters in the entire film, and so they really carry the entire the movie throughout the whole thing. And uh, they're they've got great performances in there. Our lead actress Tracy Ely actually got nominated for best actress. Oh, nice! In, uh, in the Austin Revolution Film Festival, so we're very excited for her. How many film festivals uh, happen in Austin throughout the year? Uh, well, the notable ones, obviously, it's South by Southwest, yeah. Austin Film Festival, uh, Austin Revolution has been going, I would say, now four to five years, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's Austin Web Fest, which is gaining some popularity as well. Interesting. I know, because like Austin's sort of like the uh, our warmer cousin to Portland, I guess. You know, yeah. In Portland, Oregon. So you hear the similarities all the time, you know, Definitely. Austin and Portland. So I was curious because there's so many different, we have some main film festivals. We have the Portland film festival coming up here in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of oddball ones that pop up left and right. So, <laughs> so I was curious. Are, yeah, there are so many. So it's kind of, you know, 
it's kind of there's a market for everyone obviously right so yeah. you know the uh the Austin uh, the Portland Film Festival were also submitted in there for Buzzed and uh, Fishing with Grenades also, which is the other short that we're uh, wrapping up in about a week here. So they both started at around the same time. So it's kind of a, you know, a journey to get both films done in, in the same time frame, kind of. So Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, well we can show a little bit more here. I'll uh, you have a... We had like six questions. I sort of, you sent me a, a, a handful of questions and I kind of summarized them within uh, like, you know, six subsets and it came up with a theme for today's mm -hmm. show. So we can kind of get right into that as well as show a little bit more about your films. So people have a context about um, what it is that you're working on or how does it apply to your uh, short films. Okay. Um, so today's topic is going to be Facebook marketing for filmmakers. They're like, oh, people are like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I could use this. What, what does this mean? Um, as you said, right here, we have a screen of your films, Buzz, as well as uh, Fishing with Grenades. And again, people can find you at uh, philopickens.com. And again, these slides are going to be made available after the show is all done. So you can download this and you can uh, you know, find what Philip's doing um, down in Austin. So with that said, let's get into your questions. So we're going to just, I'm going to read th through the the gist of your questions and we'll go back and take it like one question at a time. So okay, you were asked, um, well, how often do we send out posts on Facebook and email our list about our short film? So that's a very good question as well as, you know, well then how do I grow my email list for my film? That's another great question. And those two go hand in hand in terms of using Facebook marketing or we'll show the strategy of how to do that. Um, what's the best way to approach bloggers? And then how do you convince them that you have something worth sharing? And another question you had was, do I promote my overall filmmaking brand or do I promote each individual film separately? And then you have another question of, is there even a market for short films? And then lastly is, how do I use my experience with my shorts and festival run to attract investors for my feature? All right. So let's just talk about a big thing here is theme. Now there's, the theme of your films, obviously Buzz has a theme that you were mentioning. And then there's also, um, you know, uh, Fishing for with Grenades has another mm -hmm. theme. But then you also have a theme. So let's look at themes. So according to Script Lab's top 10 themes, like almost all films or stories have like these basic 10 themes. It's either Good versus Evil, uh, Love Conquers All, uh, Triumph over Adversity, uh, Individual versus Society. Uh, the battle, um, death as part of life, and revenge, loss of innocence, man versus himself, and lastly, to the top 10 is man versus nature. So as we look over this stuff, um, are you able to tell us or share us the theme of the two films? Let's start with Buzzed. Would you be able to... What What, what is the theme of Buzzed? <laughs> Uh, the theme of Buzz is pretty much the overall theme, I'd say, is, you know, love and relationships and what we're willing to do for the people that we love. Okay, so is, is it something like love has no boundaries or love, is, is it love conquers all or is it um, love is sacrifice? You know, that, you know, that's that kind of a theme. Yeah, yeah, it could be love is sacrificed and kind of bleed into love conquers all. Um, Okay. Okay. So we take that and then, um, out of curiosity, what, what's the theme for like, uh, fishing with grenades? Uh, fishing with grenades is, is, um, I mean, I can give you a basic outline. I don't have, uh, I can't really tell you. It's, it's kind of a drama mm -hmm. and it's based on these two characters who are from completely different worlds who end up meeting in like this chance encounter and go on this kind of adventure and they end up reconnecting with their fathers through this relationship that they kind of build in this one night. So I don't really know. Uh, let's take, let, here, you know, let's take a, maybe just my help. If it, we'll take a look at the um, script labs, top 10 um, themes. So okay. when you read those over again, good versus evil, Love conquers all, triumph over adversity, individual versus society, the battle, death is part of life, 
revenge, loss of innocence, man versus himself, or man versus nature. Does any of those sort of come close? So of the 10, which is the closest that you think uh, fishing with grenades falls on? Um, yeah, I guess I guess the uh, the fishing with grenades would have to be in number nine. Man or, versus or, himself. Okay, okay. All right, so what, 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 we, what we have here is um, when you have a theme, so now we're looking at your two films. You have like Love Conquers All or Love is Sacrifice or and the other film is maybe Van, Man versus Himself, you know, his, his own inner demons, you know. Um, so those are common themes. So what the, the cool thing about it is that your themes can then become your marketing message, you know. So now you have a, a very much more directed, poignant way of, of sharing what you're selling, you know. Okay. So it's like you're, you're selling the theme because you're trying to connect emotionally with an audience and they're going to connect emotionally um, um, with that message. So as long, but, but then your marketing message could be that way. So it's, it's one of those things, as long as you have at least a very clear idea what it is uh, that, that you're representing. Now, um, I always, the, lately I've really come to believe, at least for the uber independent filmmaker or any filmmaker really, the, the film, all of our films, when we make a film, it is an advertisement. Not to be like degraded, not to make it less than what it is, mm -hmm. um, but just taking the concept that if you approach your film as an advertisement, then what is it advertising? What is it promoting? And um, I'll go back here. It's promoting the theme, you know? Okay. Like you'll go back all these slides. The theme. <laughs> it <laughs> promotes the theme. So like it promotes an emotional idea or ideal. And the thing is, um, you know, in order to try to make money from this, to have an entrepreneurial mindset behind it, a film trooper mindset behind it, you've got to monetize or come up with a, a system to monetize this ability to advertise the marketing message, which is your theme. So if you look at this basic module sort of setup, the, you've seen this before, like on websites all, all over the place. Like when you're trying to buy a service or sign up for a service, you always see like a three structured offer. It usually sometimes comes like, Sign up for a basic membership for like 10 bucks, or then you get the, you know, premium membership at $97 and the, you know, ultra VIP at a thousand or whatever it might be. So the, the filmmaker, the Uber independent filmmaker, again, could utilize your film as an advertisement to sell the overall theme. That's the marketing message as one, your low hanging fruit, which might be a $1.99 rental, you know, it might be, or you might just give it away for free. Mm -hmm. you just, but you have to offer it, or you might sell it as high as 10 to $20. If you can bundle the film with other added value that are of the same theme, uh, so not, you're just not throwing a bunch of junk in there that no, has no relevance to the overall experience for the, the customer, the consumer. Um, but if you can bundle something worth a higher price point, like a $97 price point, a $249 price point, whatever it might be. And then you also create a much higher end product that maybe it's like a one-on-one -on -one session uh, with your you and your team or something that's really uh, worth, um, you know, like a $1,000, $2,000 range. The, the reason being is that if you're selling directly online, your short uh -huh. films, um, it's okay because mentally somebody coming in to look at your film if they see that it's being used to advertise, remote, or just have a deeper discussion of something that's related to the theme, um, by offering something in the middle price point, the $100 price point, the great thing about it is that you don't need to sell like millions of copies of your film. You only need to sell like a handful, you know, a couple hundred transactions to make you know, $25,000 back, $50,000, $100,000 back, you know, this is a way, a systematic way for the Uber independent filmmaker to make their money back uh, to cover the cost of their films in that range of anywhere from 1000 to a 25000 to a $100,000, $250,000 film, you know, that kind of world. So film as an advertisement for something more expensive, something of more value, but what do you market? The marketing message all is actually tied into your film's theme. Then you had asked this question of, do I promote my overall filmmaking brand or do I promote each individual film separately? And this is actually just a, 
a question that plagues all filmmakers, right? <laughs> you know, because the film itself separately is this unique product. And yes, you can do all of it. You can promote your own brand as a filmmaker. Yes, you can promote each individual film. But um, you know how Spike Lee's got, you know, it's yeah. a Spike Lee joint. And that's yeah. kind of a brand in itself, right? Right. So, you know, on this level, on an Uber level, um, you know, there are overlapping issues there where mm -hmm. are we promoting the brand of the production company or should we be promoting the film itself? And where does that overlap? Um, where should we have some sort of separation between that overlap or is it okay to have that overlap? I think it's okay. To have, it's one of the things I think is ideally you would want to have both meaning that you you want to be able to promote your own personal brand or of you as an artist, you as a filmmaker um, for the long term, for the, the long tail game. The film itself could be promoted on a short term or like a sh uh, short term plan, you know, maybe a small couple year cycle. Um, but the reality is when we're working so uber, <laughs> we're working so solo about what we do, um, there's only so much energy we could put towards one, making the film, and then two, marketing it. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really working at trying to figure out and connect the dots and curate the information so that we can figure out a much more simplistic system that doesn't overwhelm the Uber and a, and a filmmaker to still allow them to do what you want to do. This is make yeah. films. Yeah. So, with that said, let me jump into this next slide because I think it might help sort of give a little bit more clarity of where where we could go with this. So do you promote your overall filmmaking brand, you as a personal brand, as a filmmaker, or do you promote each individual film separately? Well, one thing you could do is ask yourself, what is your own theme? If we've already explored the theme of each film, then, you're, then you must have your own theme, your own interest as a filmmaker. And that is really what I call the elixir, or I, I will you know, shamelessly say that I stole that from Mr. Christopher Vogler, who did a great analysis of Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey or the, the, the concept of everything that he studied in the book called The Writer's Journey, which is one of the uh, one of the best like books on story writing and screenplay writing is uh, The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler. But he talks about the concept that all of us going through the hero's journey where we have this call to action where we're like, something's bugging us, that it's deep desire in us as an artist to go on an adventure, to make something. But mm -hmm. then we, we are encounter so many different barriers. And then we look to mentors, the wise wizard or whoever it might be. And then, you know, there's a, a moment of self-doubt at the very last moment before you fight the last beast. Like the, you know, if you're playing a video game, the last, you know, boss level. And mm -hmm. if you can defeat that beast, in the um, what what is you know metaphorically known as like sort of like the inmost cave or the deep you know going to the underground as joseph campbell talks about the underworld if you survive that the last dark battle or metaphorically the you know the last barrier obstacle of your journey of where you you know where you started you the idea is that you're supposed to come out of it with some knowledge some wisdom and it's in the form of an elixir you know, this, this, you imagine like this magical elixir that you retrieved from the inmost cave. And then your job then is to re come back to the village in the third act to share that elixir, to share the knowledge, to share the wisdom. So the thing about all this woo woo talk I'm talking about, but we as filmmakers can relate because that's what we do. We have to tell a story. And mm -hmm. most stories all fall into this parameter of the amazing work that Joseph Campbell has done over the years of studying so much of folklore and storytelling. So your theme is really your elixir. So the thing is, whatever drives you or whatever turns you on, you might not know it right away, but as you explore it, that becomes your sort of marketing message for your overall personal brand of films that you're interested in. And because you might not know it, but you might know what you're interested in. And there's, if there's a way to share what you're interested in with other people, that's your form of an elixir of sharing that, you know, that interest and knowledge. Then you just look for ways to tie that into the films you're making. There must be a reason you made buzz, you know, buzzed. There's so like, what was the personal connection you had to that story? And then that's what you share on your page or, you know, your own, in your own way in different channels. You know, I don't know what, 
uh, method of communicating that you like to do. Like it could be, you might just find yourself all the time on Instagram. So then that form of method, like nothing else, you're not on Facebook, you're not on Twitter, you, you, you don't feel pressure to do any of that. Just like, what do you normally do right now that you enjoy engaging in? If it's Facebook, then then just kind of understand how that the rules of that world work. And then when you start sharing pieces of content or visuals of things that you're interested in, you're looking for engagement for other people to comment or share or join in the discussion of what you're sharing. And we do that already with our friends. I mean, you know, share a picture of your animal, your whatever, your cat, dog, and people just like, oh my God, you're, you know, the guys, you know, whatever, you're just looking for your friends and friends and family to comment. We can oh. take that same effort and then share it to the rest of the, the world and Facebook and let, let it grow, you know, organically. And we're going to show later how Facebook doesn't really work organically as much anymore. But yeah. the whole point is when you come to that crossroad, you have to ask yourself like, all right, well, I got my film. I need to promote it, but I can make sure that whatever I'm marketing here, I've got to market the theme and the, the, to connect with people on a deeper emotional level. Um, I have two different films and I could do that in two different ways, but maybe I, there's a way to, I can do a callback or a call to action to uh, Philo Pickens productions, you know, .com or Philo Pickens.com. And within that, um, maybe there's a little, just a great quote you found from somebody you inspire that just sums up your perspective of life, you know, and then you just sort of kind of hark on, hark on that, or you heart, you know, you kind of focus on that. The, what you're trying to do is create this world for the your fan. Uh, in the world of sales, they call it creating the the a nice atmosphere for the buyer. You know, <laughs> like if I didn't know anything, but I saw your film come through, and somehow you had a still frame of your film, and it just had like a really great, you know, motivational, you know, whatever, a saying on the bottom of it, or something that made me think. You know, I might say, oh, I like that. You know, but then there's a way, there's a call to action from that that brought them back to your home base, which should be your email list eventually or your home, your your sale. I'll, I'll, I'll go into that in a se here in a second, but it's the sales funnel of uh, bringing somebody into your, um, showing them who you are and then offering them something to invite them into the conversation. And if they, if the invitation is attractive enough, you know, they hand over an email to, to get more information. And then that way they're part of this, this cycle the system that you can track and have a much deeper relationship with than the fleeting people that are scrolling through the news feed and Facebook, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. So with that said, mm -hmm. um, maybe it's not as much work as you think. Maybe all you have to do is say, there's a reason I'm doing this. Something deep down, I have my own elixir. I have my own theme. And to how does that connect with each film that I've created? And maybe just ask yourself, why did I make these films in the first place? And then share that because what happens is somebody might just dig what you're talking about and buzzed and not even knowing you have this other film called Fishing with Grenades. But because they're in this discussion, there might be a way to create a system in place where somebody comes through the funnel of discovering buzz based off what you're promoting, but it all eventually will end up back in your home base at philopickens.com. You know oh. you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. um, if you approach it as each film kind of like a lead magnet, and we'll get into that in terms of marketing and the that makes sense. Sense. yeah then then it brings it back to your home base and that way you don't feel like you're you're being spread too thin it's still so, all part of the same system so those two films could be like scouts almost bringing people. yeah yeah, yeah i got gotcha. you yeah i mean you know it's hard pressed to like compare us to like our filmmaking heroes uh, that we grew up on i mean they, they they were just of a different time they were part of a studio system even the independent studio system that uh, uh, afforded them the luxury of press that they yeah. didn't have you know they didn't have to work for but the uber independent filmmaker we're gonna have to work for it you know <laughs> yeah. and there were still studio you know independent studios that were making things you know good productions you know at that time yeah. we don't so, we don't have that anymore either yeah they, it's it's bought up by the bigger studios so yeah there's a whole um i run this webinar now that, that goes into that and i'll show you later but uh it goes still cool. takes deeper into the where we are now but um what's the net what's the webinar what's it called oh so the webinar is called 10 things filmmakers get wrong when selling their film online and how to fix them
So it's an hour long webinar where I go over 10 things that um, over, over the year or so that I've been doing these uh, film marketing Fridays and working on Film Trooper has uh, allowed me an opportunity to um, really dig deep and try to help answer some of these questions. But by doing so, it's allowed me to curate a lot of information as well as step back and look at connecting the dots in a whole different way. Okay. You know, and um, so if anybody wants to know about that, you can just go to filmtrooper.com forward slash webinar and you can see when the next live webinar session will take place. Cool. So, Looking cool. forward to that. <laughs> Thanks. So let's go on um, to the next slide. Okay. You see that here? The elixir. So just ask yourself, take a deep, you know, nice long walk and ask yourself, you know, what is your elixir and how does it all tie it into all the films you make? And that will be your marketing message. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's see here. Um, now you had a question, is there even a market for short films? Um, yeah. And that's, that's the big question. Yeah. yeah. You know, what do I say here? Whoops. Sorry. My quick, quick hand, quick hand draw. Okay. So is there a market for short films, even a market? And I say, if, if you approach your film as an advertisement, you betcha, there's definitely a market for short films. Now the problem is, is that when we think traditionally, you know, where does a short film fall into the traditional scheme of things? Um, you know, when you go to film festivals, sometimes you're, especially a short, you're part of a collection. So somebody sits down, you're one film of 12 or whatever it might be that somebody sits to the session. And you're yeah. hoping that your, your short film is one of the better ones or memorable ones within that slate that is being shown on the different film festivals. You know, but you never know. Because, you know, the worst case scenario, you don't want to be the most boring, you know, dog pile of that, that list. You know, you're kind of like, oh, it's someone good. Um, as, a, as its own, I have, you know, there's no rules. You can just throw it up online and start charging for it. You know, I mean, hell, you could charge $1,000 for it. You know, will anybody buy it? You know, people might go, oh, they're not. you know, yeah, you have to kind of, but it's just measuring the marketplace. But yeah. if, you, if you come to the concept of your film as an advertisement, then... That makes much more sense. Now here, you know, with, you know, philopickens.com, the production company, you have, I've seen some work there. You've done some commercial work. So the, the funny thing is a lot of people in the Uber independent film space um, are working freelancers. You know, they are getting paid to be a cinematographer, a grip, sound person, whatever, the director. Uh, they, they're running a small ad agency sort of or a production company that works with an ad agency. Okay. And then what, ha yeah. So what happens is what, who's the paying cu customer? It's somebody with a product, a company with a product that hires an ad agency that needs to either have a production division or hires a production division. And then they create this little movie. And yeah. a lot of these movies, you know, there's no rules now on web. I mean, I've, I, I work as a part-time actor up here in Portland and a lot of the jobs I get are for these web based commercials that will never see the national broadcast television commercial uh, yeah. parameters like so it's not a 30 50 it's not a 15 second spot it's not a 30 second spot or minute you know when we're dealing with web stuff they're running like five seven minutes they're like short films mm -hmm. but they're able to use them those companies are able to use them for their website for you know in front of youtube apps or you know hulu or whatever it might be so the interesting thing is is that most people are already doing it anyway and they don't you know maybe they just need to take a step back and go you're right every film that we make is an advertisement. Again, it doesn't mean it degrades the art value of it. It just means that the concept of your every film that we create is a springboard for some other discussion. The difference is in the world of business and marketing and, and sales is that, is that a, um, a, a video that you create or a, an ad you create, like a commercial, has a direct motive. It is either to bring awareness so that eventually that sales can be made. So for the Uber independent filmmaker, you were making a short film. There's a reason you made it, you know, maybe it was just a artistic calling, but now you're asking like, well, how do I make a sale out of this? And like, is there a market for it? Well, I think there's a market for the bigger question, which is again, what your theme is about. So if you can figure, you know, really tap into your theme. So when I say your theme, like you might just do a Google search of, uh, let's take buzz, you know, love is sacrifice. What does that mean? And you might find all these different blog posts. You might find uh, self-help books, you know, things like that. And within the conversation of those 
um, or blog articles or articles. Look in the comment. Go just you might just do a skim through what the article says, but then go to the very bottom and see what people are saying in the comment sections, because that's where the real customers is exposing either uh, disagreement or agreement or exposing pains or struggles they're having, and so that in the world of sales and marketing is um, always more effective if you can identify the problem. Uh, better than your potential customer and then provide a solution they didn't even know existed. So not that you have to sell a product, but what it is is you have to sell the emotional psyche. Mm -hmm. So if love is sacrifice, then the marketing message was like, then you're asking like, well, okay, okay, what is my short film then advertising? You know, what kind of product can I create? Let's just say, keep it real simple. Let's say you took um, one week and you did nothing but on your free time as much as possible, explored the topic of love is sacrifice and what that really means and what are the pain points of, of this sacrifice. And then all you did was you curated the information from articles, books, and you summarize it the best that you could in a much simplistic, more digestible way that somebody didn't have to go through and read as much as you did. So because you took the job of just curating a simple, really short ebook that's in a PDF format, and you could slap it on like, you know, Love is Sacrifice by, you know, Philip Abraham, you know, <laughs> and it's like, like, this is a collection of curation of things I have explored with this topic and this struggle. And I think you might enjoy a very simplistic, you know, how to guide to get through this or whatever it might be. He goes, and this and this process of me exploring this question helped me make this film buzzed. So now you have added value. Now somebody's like wants to like pick up a free PDF of your ebook because it's tapping into that emotional theme. Then they understand uh, there's a, there's an emotional connection to like, oh, I see what he why he did this for buzzed. As opposed to what happens is a lot of people go, well, no, I got my film. Like somebody's got to like my, like people think the film is worth more than it really is. Mm -hmm. If you look at film as an advertisement, then it's advertising this bigger thought. So that is something you could do that you might sell for $7. I don't know. Like it's the book and the, the movie. It's a bundle, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. The next thing you know, you're like, yeah, I made some money on my short film especially if it's bundled with something else that has higher value. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's almost like taking the concept of crowdfunding, mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're not really, there's no end goal or crowdfunding goal, like a, a dollar limit. You're just putting that out there and yeah. uh, getting sponsorship, basically. Yeah, you know, it's funny you brought that up because crowdfunding is an excellent, you know, study of what they call in the sales and marketing world, the launch. Mm -hmm. like every company either has a product or service. And especially when you're dealing in the product business, um, there's always a launch period, which is retail. You might see it. They wrap around holidays. Every mm -hmm. stinking weekend, there's some sort of event almost now. You know, there's a, there's a reason to drink. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? There's yeah. like everybody's looking for some reason to drink and they will eventize it and, and make an event out of Mardi it's summertime. Gras. Yeah, summertime, you know, Mardi Gras, 4th of July, it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Anything to give the American public or the world a, a, a chance to celebrate, they will market. Yeah. And that so, goes back to the greater theme, right? There's a bigger yeah. theme. The drinking is just a small a part of it, the advertisement for the drink. But yeah. the bigger part is, you know, happiness and joy and uh, community. There you go. And God, I mean, Coca Cola is probably the biggest example. Happiness, right? yes, it's happiness. They sell happiness. That's it. And McDonald's tied into that and said, you know what? We will sell happiness too and convenience. You yeah. know, and it's just like they make it's you know they don't make the best burgers in the world at all, not even close. But they sell a lot because they they're using it as a means to sell um, uh, a way of life. Yeah, there's a, there's a concept behind that. Yeah. Um, so the filmmaker could do the same thing. Because then you can have... I'm actually team. having trouble bridging that gap. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. most people do. I think that... I think if you can just celebrate what, you know, reason why you made your film, you know, okay. what, what was the core message of the film, um, uh, it would be really... It's going to be beneficial to you as well because... Then you're gonna have deeper conversations because what happens? What usually okay? What usually happens at a film festival, right? 
-hmm. you might have a Q&A. And the people there are mostly other filmmakers. And they usually will ask the usual questions. Hey, what did you shoot it on? And what was your budget? You know? <laughs> like, I don't really care about your message of your film, but I am interested in what you shot it on and what were your money, how much you spent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if you can do that, I can, I can do it based on those yes. stations. That's what they're looking for. Right. And so yeah. the problem, problem with that is then that is what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And unless you're selling it that way, then the, you know, they're not, they're not going to be interested. However, if you, if, because there's so much film product out right now, there's so much, com, you know, supply and not yeah. enough demand. Um, then, it's not, it's getting comfortable in that place, being very comfortable knowing that the film you create may be not as precious as you think. And you're like, oh my God, how can that be? I mean, I'm bleeding for this thing. I go, that's, it's good, but I mean, it's, it's helpful, but taking a deep breath and saying, maybe I don't, it doesn't have to be so precious. Doesn't mean it has to be great. It just means that it's not all in one. With crowdfunding, what happens is a filmmaker might raise 10,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 dollars. And they'll yeah. spend the entire amount on their product, um, not having any um, sort of uh, using the cash. I, I always kind of like, like the hundred thousand dollar range. So if you raise a hundred thousand dollars of crowdfunding, most people would just make a hundred thousand dollar film, as Ooh. opposed to saying like, "Wait a minute, I raised a hundred thousand. I'm going to make the film for only ten thousand. I'm going to put aside uh, another fifty thousand that's going to go to marketing and promotion." I'm going to net, put another side uh, in just in case for uh, business development and taxes and um, also distribution, you know, or, you know, deliverables or whatever it might be. So that's much more a business approach by saying, look, the $100,000 is what we consider a business operating expense. That's what we raised. Um, if you were in the, the world of the venture capitalists, if you were having a startup and you raised a million dollars, Nowhere in the right mind where the VC give you a million dollars knowing that you're, you're going to take the entire million dollars and just do it and, and make the product. They're going to look at it. They're going to look at you like, whoa, whoa, whoa. where's your One business product. infrastructure? Yeah. Yeah. Where's yeah. Your, yeah. Where's your business infrastructure? Where's your marketing department? You know, where is all these other things that are, that are needed to run a business around the product because the product is one thing but we, I, you know as a uh, investor of, of what you're doing i want to see returns you know i mean yeah. i, I want to make sure because if i know you're blowing the entire wad on the product um and the only business plan we have is that there's hope marketing meaning i'm hoping that i make something great and i hope that somebody buys it from me you know yeah um the difference is if we can be more responsible that way uh moving forward with by looking at it in a different way. It was saying, okay, I know that my film is an advertisement for this bigger th thought connected to the theme, but I sell something more in that theme. And you know what? I won't feel like I'm selling out because there was an artistic, emotional reason I made this film. You know, of case in point. So this my little film, The Cube. It was a feature film made for $500 without a crew. Yeah. The theme of this film is letting go of fear. That's mm. all. You know, so... What is the first wave in the first year of marketing this film, I didn't market that. What I've done is just marketed as the $500 film with no crew. What did I, how did I make it? What equipment did I use? I marketed it to other filmmakers. And so it was, you know, it was, it, the sales just limped along. But I knew that going in, you know. Now that I'm more comfortable, now I've gotten some feedback from audiences have seen it, um, I'm more excited about doing a remarketing brand of this by changing the poster, by changing the sales message, and targeting people that are interested in this deeper thought of letting go of fear. Yeah. And th what that allows me to do is have use it as an advertisement to have fun and and get more fulfillment, as, you know, soulfully as creatively speaking mm -hmm. to people on this deeper level. You know. Yeah. And so. Um, I'm excited to roll that out in the next couple of months to show oh, people. A, yeah, to show like, okay. That's let's... a great idea though that you <laughs> put it out, you got so much feedback and you're retooling another or, you know, replanning another, uh, you know, distribution of it or, you know, marketing, marketing it again, but in a different way. Yeah. You're not just, you know, moving on to a new project that would be uh, starting from scratch, you know? Yeah, well, I am too, but it's one of those things like, um, 
because I want to be able to do two, two things. One, like if you yeah. had a film and you didn't have an audience, you, yeah. you didn't build anything, what do you do? Because I, the worst part is like when you read all the advice, it's like, well, you should have built some art audience. Like you shouldn't, you should have made it. it. How do you yeah. build it based on nothing? Yeah, exactly. And it's like I, and I, I do see a disconnect a lot of times with um, some the uh, expert marketing or business marketing advice and mm -hmm. the creative process. And, yeah. you know, and it, and I think it, 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 you can have either or, but understanding sort of how it all works. So anyway, so with that said, um, yeah, th you, it's not a sellout if you, if you look at your film as an advertisement, because you need to have some business structure in place and the whole world of Hollywood, the films that they make. That's the model. They, yeah. It is. That, that's what they do. They are, they are in the business of license exploitation. They use their film products as a way to advertise for what? And George Lucas will be the first one to tell you that all the money is in the action figures. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they made the Transformer movies was not to make great cinema, was, man, you know, whatever, Universal Paramount owned the license of the, that toy franchise. They said, we're going to make some movies. They're going to get people excited, and we sell more toys. That's it. Yeah. So the, the Uber independent filmmaker did the same thing. But you can find... Uh, a place of, you know, um, truth, artistic truth in your efforts and not feel like you're selling out. So, so I'm excited to see what your elix elixir will be eventually, you know. <laughs> I, yeah. I really, you know, the concept of um, trying to, uh, what to do with the short film, if we can actually sell the short film, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good kind of uh, you touched on the crowdfunding we discussed that briefly and i think you know for the budget that we did make it on and since we are building an audience there's nothing wrong with putting out a crowdfunding campaign after the movie's completely done as a marketing tool and an audience building tool you know and we mm -hmm. can recoup monetarily the the small amount that we've put in and we're also growing our audience at the same time hopefully and, and getting audience interaction uh yeah. hopefully with the incentives if the incentives are all based on you know um uh, interactive you know yeah. elements then i think that that'd be great to continue building a relationship with our audience and you know that was kind of the point of philo pickens because philo mm -hmm. pickens can keep an audience long after fishing and buzzed for however many films that we make, you know? Exactly. And when we get to a feature, we would have already built an audience based on all of the short films that we've been working on. So yeah, that, that's kind of the bigger picture. The yeah. fun thing about the whole audience building thing is that, you know, I don't have a huge audience and so on, but the reality, I always tell this to people, it's like, you know, the reality is if I had all the real, like, if all the people that do follow me and that have shown interest, if we all showed up at an event together in a room, oh. I would be completely moved by how many people would have shown up, you know, whether or not it be 10 people, hundred people, 600 people, you know, it's like, I would sit back and go, that is amazing. So yeah. the reality is online, um, there are real people behind the screens, you know? So for you, yeah. the great thing is like any filmmaker, as you build your audience, you might start small, you might have a small audience, but you might not even know who your audience is. And that's sort of the fun thing is finding that out. And as you have those interactive sort of discussions with your, the people that join in maybe the crowdfunding campaign, you know, yeah. post film, whatever it might be. Um, again, that concept of using the crowdfunding campaign that way is, is um, I think Kickstarter will be the first place to explain like they, they don't see themselves as a marketplace, but there's other crowdfunding platforms like Indiegogo, that are a little bit more, I think, open to that. Um, Eden Spark. Yes, yeah, Eden Spark, where they want that ongoing relationship to, mm -hmm. to nurture and happen. Um, yeah. Kickstarter's mission is all right there in their name. It's just a Kickstarter. It's just to get you going. You know, It's not there for a long term or used as a pre-sale model for products and something like that. Um, but the overall appetite or the experience that an audience goes through through crowdfunding is the same experience as somebody going through a product launch, the initial product yeah. launch of, you know, celebrating uh, what you're doing in a short amount of time, a, a controlled amount of time. And Hollywood does the same thing with all their films. 
we they we know like a couple weeks out the film's coming out but then we see right before the weekend a lot of ads or things kind of you know brought to our attention trying to get everybody into the opening you know day weekend to make yeah. it an event mm -hmm. so the same can be done online and the same can be done in a short film if it's tied to other things or just other added value so that people feel like it's it's more than just a you know a film and uh yeah. i think you'd be okay so um let me jump on the next questions you have here oh, sure let's see here uh so cool you see this this is um what's the best way to approach bloggers and how do you convince them that you have something worth sharing I was just at a conference a couple of weeks ago um, with Jonathan Fields presenting, and he's very famous in sort of starting movements. And he's a blogger, a podcaster, a business person. And he would he, his answer to this question is simply make news. <laughs> the, the concept here is what this is what he did. So when we, when you're trying to get in front of a blogger or make your film worthy of sharing it to their audience. Um, the concept of make news is simply, this is what he did. So Jonathan Fields is, um, a business entrepreneur in New York. He was a right, he's a writer and author and all stuff like that. But he also was running a, a yoga studio, uh, where he was teaching yoga and he's really into that world. So in order to get the news outlets, he happened, case in point, that's some, um, kind of like set up here i mean he he's he was living in new york which is like the news capital of the world right mm -hmm. <laughs> so he has some access to people um more uh easily than the regular joe living out in texas or something like that yeah. so what he does he owns this yoga studio and then he asks some of his contacts um where he was doing some studies or like like his yoga studios, he he volunteered himself as a guinea pig to a research facility in one of the universities to see the so they can measure the effects of yoga and uh, fat burning or calorie burning. You know, this is many mm. years ago. So because of the studies were very promising, Jonathan Fields goes out and sends a email blast or a newsletter blast or PR, a press release blast out to the the press, and he makes it news he says and he created an article that basically said that yoga you know kills calories or whatever it might be or we, something that you could see like uh the health and fitness uh divisions of magazines and newspapers going oh i need a new story so well, somebody's already created the story for me what is this about so they you know and he what he did is he did a scarcity play which is like the first person to respond um to this news item will get exclusive access to the data that we're collecting over at this university you know what i mean so you're like oh, okay so the news items just like okay i want that news item so he built a relationship with a news outlet one of the main ones you know some health magazine or whatever it is and he gets his students to partake in a further study and then the results from that study they craft a a article within that article um there's advertisements of where advertiser but, but mention of where his studio is located right yeah. so the the news publication that's going to run this article says look we have a large subscriber base all over the world um do you have some sort of link uh, besides your local you know area uh, of something that is much more online friendly about what you're doing and he says oh yes we definitely do we are in uh, post-production for our online uh, yoga training series. He goes, oh great, give me that, that link and I'll make sure I put that in the article or whatever it might be. He didn't have anything, he totally bullshitted it. <laughs> he was like, I don't know, we don't have anything. It forced him to create a video series. So by the time the article came out, the article had mass you know, reach, it highlighted him as an expert to go to, and then it also had a call to action that allowed people to buy into what they were selling. Oh. So the concept here, is for any uber independent filmmaker is to understand the incentives or the world of each blogger uh, they need to make news so if you have your film you have a film buzz short film but it's maybe digging deeper in you know love uh, is sacrifice maybe what it is you create news you create news about i did a research study or the latest research that i've been working with the local uh, university says that um you know, sacrificing uh, leads to depression or 
sacrificing oneself is not the healthiest form of love or something like that where you can That's see great. we're yeah. all yeah so now you can see totally where uh, yeah. a blogger will pick up especially like a relationship blogger would take mm -hmm. news that at least you've done some research in and but it's but you almost write the article for them to to an extent that says how you tied it into your film so that way people you know when they read it they're caught on to the overall theme the overall emotional connection to that theme and that in an art in a, in a news article they read it and then if it's tied into something else boom that's how you get to share your um your work <laughs> i make it sound so easy but you know oh, that is it. such great advice <laughs> yeah, really yeah yeah that is uh that's something you know when i was sitting down with the co-producer we we're talking about buzz and how to cross promote and how to you know get other things involved that's something that didn't even cross our minds really <laughs> so yeah make a no-brainer yeah <laughs> wow yeah so yeah so it's just that's a great takeaway and i you know i definitely credit the experts uh jonathan fields on that and you know but i okay. can see how that could be applied to the filmmaking world good All stuff right. Cool. So let's see. Your next question was, well, how do I use my experience with my shorts and festival run to attract investors for my feature? Mm -hmm. um, investors yeah. and producers as well. Yeah. So it could be, you know, non-financial uh, producers, just producers with experience in this realm of filmmaking, this, this uber independent filmmaking. Yeah. So really what you need is all, if you can just take solace in one thing, which is, you just need to get one yes. <laughs> you mean you might get 99 no's or people not interested in what you're doing, but if you can get one person or one group of people to say yes, then that's all it takes. And I know it sounds so stupid, but I mean, the idea is like, how do you go about it? Um, it's what you believe in. Like you probably have enough. Like it says, I am a filmmaker. I have these two short films. I've done, I've, they played well at the film festivals. Um, I, you can announce it. I am looking towards, you know, partnerships or, um, and investors to make this next feature film product. Um, by just putting it out there, the energy out there, you know how it is. You never know. Somebody at a party goes, Oh, I didn't know, you know, if you should talk to Philip, he's working on this. He's a filmmaker too. And then, you know, it is, so it turns around like, Oh, what's your film about now in the world of investors? Sometimes, um, it's never you never know exactly why somebody puts money forth or not, you know, yeah. it could be like all of a sudden uh, your next fe the feature film you have is completely different. Maybe it's like a comedy, you know, about lacrosse. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying like it, the whole point is like, and because this topic, the subject matter is makes it interesting and attractive to a group of dentists. They're like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, then we're in. Then you get investors. You get investors. Believe me, you will get a producer because <laughs> yeah. you know. I mean, it's like you. Sh if you show a little bit of the concept of the Kickstarter money, if you do a little bit of work and you s see some results, you get one person to say yes. That should lead. The idea is that it, it's supposed to trickle down, or not trickle down. It's supposed to infect uh, others to go. One person said yes. Somebody's in. Who's in? Somebody actually donate. Get, get money. That did, yeah. and you want more money oh okay well talk to me about what, what's going on here well you that's know? like everything right yeah nobody's doing it people are you know apprehensive about yeah involved but there is um oh i should put it in here but um there's uh there's a program uh that tom malloy does where he's uh, known for his book bankroll and um, has partnered with jason brubaker over filmmaking stuff.com to create a online course called uh, like film financing guide or the movie money but you can just go to uh filmtrooper.com forward slash movie money that will set yeah that will send you right to uh this course if you really want to know how um to raise money that way in, in that level so okay. outside of the crowdfunding world um so yeah, so you just need to get one yes. I mean, it's, it sounds like a kind of so simplified it, answer, but is that along the journey? Like basic. So there's nothing proactive specifically we can do to target those type of producers we're looking for, or well, find answers. We have to just go on the journey with everything else, and maybe somebody will be affected by it if they see it, or in a festival, or part of the whole audience building. Yeah, I think. There's got to be a targeted way to 
to kind of get people yeah. who have a history of doing this. Uh, and I don't mean on a on even an independent filmmaking level. I just mean like uh, yeah. on the Uber level, there has to be individuals who are uh, passionate about these type of projects. And depending on what you're doing, they may be interested or not, but how do we target those individuals to be able to give them our message? You know what I mean? Yeah, so... God, that's an open. That's a sorry. Boring, sorry. That's, no, that's, no, that's a loaded question. I'll tell you why. Um, because the film industry is completely, it's in this weird transition. There is change, and it's it's happening. We all we've already seen it happen. Mm -hmm. But it could come, and so the old ways, the tradition of of how people are making money, are changing. The the top of this presentation with Brian Grazer saying Brian Grazer, one of the most prominent film producers of all time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. is saying that things have changed for him. Things have changed for Spielberg, things have changed for everyone. Uh, I have another quote from Paul Schrader, the writer of Taxi Driver and a, a yeah. writer and director. He was saying that nothing in the last hundred years of cinema is the same anymore. Like nothing applies. Meaning that to give you some bit of information of how to find these producers that exist, they don't even know anymore. I mean, it's like it's complete change. And in my webinar, again, filmtuber.com forward slash webinar, um, this hour long presentation I give, I actually give about 10 minutes a, a, a set aside that goes into how the film industry works, really works. Like if you really want to know how a producer and a distributor makes their money and where the filmmaker fits into that and what's on the verge of potentially changing that system completely, which is why we as uber independent filmmakers are sit left standing going, whoa, what system is left for us? Which is again, a reason why I wrote the book in the first place. So, but if you're looking to connect with somebody locally, maybe, or anywhere, mm -hmm. um, the, the standards go, if you're looking to connect with a producer, um, look at certain films, like think about your next feature film, whether the project you're working on, and what is it most similar to? And then, you know, IMDb, if you get IMDb, IMDb Pro, you're able to like see who worked on those films that you think are similar. Then you do your research of finding out who the, that person is, what their connections is, and then potentially uh, go like a level lower. Who was the uh, associate producer? Who was the you know assistant? Oh, or whatever. And so what happens is then you can maybe connect with that person on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and just have a conversation over time to see the realities of what it was like to make that film and ask them the advice. You know, it says if I'm trying to get in front of a producer to partner up on this particular project, ask them what they recommend. They were going to have a whole different, you know, set of information for you that will lead you down a much more clear path if that's where you want to pursue. Now, the <laughs> investor part of it, usually what happens is the producers there, um, there's a small producers club in Hollywood, the bubble, is like anybody who could raise money to get a film made and sold, you're part of that club. Yeah. Everybody else is sort of trying to be part of that club. But there's only a few people, a very small few people that are actually part of that club. And once you're part of that club, and then you have those long-term relationships with other film financiers, uh, foreign film financiers, uh, you know, the global, you know, film market financiers and distribution and, and financing, that kind of stuff. And then that's the world you work in. Uh, okay. But again, um, but for the Uber, meaning that when I say you only need one yes, is that you say you're not working, you're not playing that world. Maybe you have no connection. Maybe you have make no headway, but you have a guy working in a local car dealership that owns a lot of car dealership, a plumber, a, a dentist, people that have maybe expendable cash that always had this love for the movies. Mm -hmm. And they are connecting with you in a way because uh, one, they liked your film, maybe they saw your short film, and then they are turned on by the fact that you have this bigger project in mind, but the, the overall pitch or the concept of the idea, they're like, oh, I want to be in it. Or I want to be part of it, or something. You never know. It only when I say when it takes one, you get one yes after ninety nine rejections. That one yes sometimes has a way to be like allowing other people to join in. Um, everybody's af always afraid to be the first one to step in to say yes. Um, that's what you know. Hollywood is designed that way. Nobody wants to take the ownership of saying yes. They just want to make sure that they say no enough times that they're not held accountable, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're, 
if it's good, you get the credit. If it doesn't, you don't have to worry about it. So that concludes part one of this Film Marketing Fridays, um, even though it is titled Facebook Marketing for Filmmakers. Again, you won't see that until part two. So we can conclude part one here and go ahead and check out part two, which we get into a little bit more of the details of Facebook marketing for filmmakers.